Um, I think the bulletin may say, say number 844, but it's actually 833 if you're using the book. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar, draw me near to where you are. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table. As we're getting ready, hopefully before, days before, we know for the next week uh, that we're going to come and worship God and we're going to be together with others. Uh, we miss each other. I, I hope we, we do. We all miss each other because we know that with the numbers and with, uh, with uh, uh, the encouragement of seeing one another, like Monica said many times and a lot of Brothers and sisters, I said, just with that alone, and then when you you know when you see uh, and you know of things that that are so encouraging about uh, what's happening, even though with the trials and the, and the problems and the, and the sicknesses and everything that that we continue to to try to, to do that to at least come and be able to 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 help one another in, in that at least. So uh, thank you. On my part and my wife's part, and I pray that that others also will be able to, to be encouraged, and they can encourage us if they come in pretty soon. Uh, but uh, I had an announcement from uh, uh, Ginger. She says prayers for my mom, Mary Tolan, for continued strength and recovery, so she will soon be able to go home. And the second part of it, the CEO, CEOs will be this Tuesday. Uh, February 7th at 6.30 at Red Lobster. So get a hold of her for the, uh, to make those arrangements. Um, yeah, that's the main thing. I don't know if there's any other announcements that anybody... Okay, yeah. Yeah, I changed my glasses. <laughs> These are for seeing more. Oh yeah, the the bottles for for uh, Bible. So remember Leave that. Out. What's that? You can pass it. Leave out. Yeah, you can. Somebody oh, did that. Somebody asked oh, me that. Yeah. Uh, you, you in most places they'll take them that I know of. You, leave, you can leave the caps on the plastic. The cans is a whole different thing. But the, you can leave them on there. Uh, once in a while you hear or they'll have a sign somewhere. They will say 
uh, to take them off, but uh, I've never, I never heard, I heard him uh, tell me that or somebody that I know when we've taken different places. So they're afraid of you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's just that they, they think they, they get too busy. They go now they're going to lose all these people. Just going to walk away. Go oh we we got all these caps or whatever reason. But anyway, so if we have a place, that, we're going to start a camp. There's going to be a, a place to drop them off. So yeah, you can you know we can get a, a hold of quite a bit of them. I, I see them uh, into games out there, soccer games or whatever, baseball games, or football games later on or wherever the park. <laughs> A lot of people just throw everything right there, you know, and it's uh, a lot of it. Uh, but anyway, so we remember that. So, and then sweet sensations, February twelfth. Uh, so following the, the service on Sunday, so we'll have some some goodies, some coffee, and, and things. So uh, we remember that, and we'll remind the other brothers because they might not get it all when they come in. Let us pray. Our Father and our, our God, we know, Father, that you are the only true and living God. We may sometimes act or maybe live our lives in error by thinking that there's others, and we're, we're sorry about that, Father. We want to be right with you and with one another. And we want to be encouraged and be encouraged with, with one another as we worship together, we sing, we pray. We know of each other's sometimes our, our, our faults and our necessities, our needs that, that we have. With all those things, we, we know, Father, that you call us a family, a spiritual family, that can do all these things and can, and can be the strength for our lives as we live in this life, in this body. Help each one of us, Father, and help us to, to be there for others. We know there's a lot of needs. There's many, many that we know of and many more in the world that are suffering. But Father, we want to focus most of our time and time and energy as we serve as we walk and we serve but that we can share you and your son with all people father and bring many more to you to your kingdom to your family <coughs> Let us stand together now in worship, as you are able, of course. Holy, holy, holy.
once again, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, one of the most uh, impressive statements in the Bible, or for me, is in Psalms uh, 122, verse 1, where uh, the psalmist writes, I was glad when they said, let us look at the house of the Lord. And uh, there are several verses that I want to quote, especially the one uh, First Corinthians 11 concerning why we take the Lord's Supper. But we take the Lord's Supper because Christ died for us. That was a historical moment in, his, in history that we should all remember. Mm -hmm. That there is someone who is so loving that they would die for us, mm -hmm. even for sinners. Yes, sir. And so we uh, give thanks. And so give thanks for the, the bread. Holy Father in heaven, once again we thank you so many times for the things that you've done for us, especially the death of your son and his resurrection to demonstrate the truth that you exist. Father, we have these. Thank you so much for this day that we can come together and be glad as we partake of the Lord's Supper and remember the great sacrifice that Christ made for us. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we give a thanks for the fruit of the vine. <coughs> Holy Father, again, we raise up your name and Glory. We ask you to continue to be with us and always remember that when Christians get together on the first day of the week, that that's not the only day that we worship you and mm -hmm. think of you and thank you. And as we take the fruit of the vine, Father, help us to always remember the things that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Deeper than the ocean and wider than the sea is the grace of the Savior for sinners like me.
together uh, for the scripture reading and for children who uh, are going to Bible now to be dismissed. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, the third chapter, verses 9 through 12. The Bible reads, Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are pressing them. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with you. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Let us pray. Father, thanking you for another opportunity that you've given us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. We are just so humbled by each of these experiences, each Lord's Day, that we are so blessed, Father, to feast on your word, to sample the good news, to ingest it into our souls, Father. We pray that this day, Father, that your word will speak to us and that during this time that all things that are hindrances from allowing your word to speak to us be removed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. It's good to see those of us who are here this morning. Um, Always a joy once again to look out and see uh, new faces, faces I have not seen in a while. But there's also those who are not here that uh, I'd just like to make mention of one in particular, our brother Wayne. Uh, let's lift him up in prayer as he's dealing with uh, not only the care for uh, his brother Shirley, but he's dealing with some health issues as well. Let's remember our brother Wayne um, in our times that we uh, petition God for, for, for prayer. Also, I would like to say uh, just a quick comment about um, our bottles to uh, Bibles. Yes, bring your bottles, bring your cans, bring your recyclable goods that can be redeemed for, that have that CA redemption value, not the ones that we just don't, you, you understand what I mean. We want this to be an endeavor that we can all participate in, all of us, because I don't know anybody that doesn't drink bottled water. I don't know anybody that, that you know, and somebody's going to drink something that, that we can, we, that can be recycled. How about this? You're paying somebody five cents for each, each bottle that you drink. You may as well get something back for it. Yeah, CA Redemption Value. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to rally around this and so that we can, we can do things to support the ministry of, 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 of proclaiming the word of God. Uh, so we can all join in this, amen? amen. I am um, happy that uh, we had such a wonderful time last weekend uh, after worship service on our potluck, the first potluck that we've had in quite a long time uh, under the banner of a potluck we've had a dinner. But a potluck was, was very nice, very, a lot of participation. It was good to see everyone just what appeared to be having a good time. Um, I really enjoy Sunday mornings. You know, there's a song, there's something about Sunday mornings, you know, where we, uh, how about this, I get excited. Uh, on Sunday mornings. I get excited on Saturday evenings, Saturday afternoons. 
is when I, I begin to really uh, engross my time and my spirit and my thoughts into the Word of God, knowing that I have you know, one, one objective, and that is, is to give you a word, to give you a word from, from, from the Word of God that not is just, that's not just knowledge, per se, because you can read the Word of God, and you'll get some knowledge, but I want you to get understanding. This is going to require me to elucidate on a few few passages and, and, and you know, to, to bring the Word uh, uh, to life, if, if I can say it that way. And so, um, in doing so, uh, it is a, a wonderful task that's time-consuming, um, but the reward is that uh, you get to hear what I'm studying, if that's a reward. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give it to you how God gave it to me. And uh, we've been, I've been on this journey of, of elevating in our conscience mind that we are more than just Christians. We are disciples. If you don't understand what a disciple is at this point, then just understand just real shortly because this may be your first time here uh, in a while, or your first time uh, ever, or your first time watching this uh, this live stream and hearing this word disciple. A disciple is a follower of, of somebody, but we are disciples of Christ. So we are followers of Christ. We seek Christ and his, his teachings and his word. We seek to understand who he is, what his will for us, what he would have us to not do, places he wants us to go, places he doesn't want us to go. He, 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 Christ is, is, is the all, the, the one shop stop for uh, your road to heaven. You don't need to go anyplace else to learn anything about how to get to heaven. You don't need to learn, for that matter, to go anyplace else about how to live your life here on this earth. I can tell you that some of my darkest days in my life, and not that I've had dark, woe woe is me kind of days. Well, I've had a few, but uh, who hasn't? I'm going to be honest. But some of my darkest moments are, were, were times that, that, that I knew who God was, and I knew of the power and the saving power of Christ, and I had a relationship, so I knew, but I walked away from it. And I made a conscious decision, God, I'm, I'm going to put you on timeout. I'm going to put you on timeout, and I'm going to go do my thing. And when I did my thing, oh, those were some, you know, you would have been, you'd have thought, you know, you've been set, the little bird is set free from the cage so he can fly, Robin, fly. Well, I flew and I flew into brick walls and to the storms and hurricanes and, and mudslides and fires and, and you name it. Uh, it was there waiting for me because I turned, my, turned away from God and, and uh, set my sights on other things. We have a need, an opportunity. We have a problem that we cannot fix. God can fix. And that is, he wants us to be his ambassadors, those who are going to go out and proclaim the word. And the reason that he wants us to be that is because he does not want any to perish, but he wants everyone to to come to him and be redeemed. I'm just going to paraphrase it that way. Okay? That's, uh, that's Mark 101 talking there. God does not want anyone to perish. So if you are, uh, you, you've stepped away from God or you don't know God, you're on the road to perishing. You need to come back. Come back to uh, the light. Okay? And so this book, this text that I landed on, in the book of Exodus is a book that's going to give us a very clear glimpse. It's going to outline in very distinct fashions and, and details, give us details so clear that it jumps off the pages uh, in how it is that God, first of all, he feels about us and that he loves us. He, he cares about us. And Secondly, how he, what steps does he take to, to show us that he cared about us, to help us in our times of trouble? And thirdly, 
Is he just going to leave us there? What expectations does he have for us afterwards? In other words, we got a problem. God, we're going to make known our problem to you. He knows what our problem is. But he likes and requires us to make it known to him. That's worship. Secondly, he's going to show us what he's going to do and how he's going to get it done, how he's going to accomplish it. And thirdly, he's going to tell us what his, ex his expectation for us is going forward. So let's take a look at this text. The book of Exodus, um, I don't know why this, this battery must be weak. There we go. My left hand is good. The book of Exodus um, is a book that we should become familiar with. You've heard it. it. It's hard to live in this life, to turn on a TV at, at some point in time without hearing something about the Ten Commandments. Who doesn't know about the story of the Ten Commandments? Well, maybe it's a generational thing. I don't even think they showed that program during Easter like it was a ritual. Uh, it was a required viewing and showing around Easter on television. I don't know that they show it on TV anymore. Cecil B. DeMille's, The Ten Commandments, you know, and, and I watched them every year. It was like watching The Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, it was one of those traditional things. On Easter, we watched The Ten Commandments. Okay? The story of The Ten Commandments is a story of an exodus, right? An exodus from one thing and deliverance into something else. And that Exiting or that exodus uh, involved uh, the children of Israel, God's chosen people. And the Bible tells us that when we read um, Exodus chapters 1 and chapters 2, it sets the stage for what is going to happen in chapter 3. Chapter 1, we know that uh, the children of Israel ended up in Egypt because of Joseph. Joseph was one of the sons, the most favorite son uh, of, the, of his 12 brothers. We know that uh, they threw him in a pit. They didn't like him because he said some things about what he saw in a dream. And long story short, uh, he ended up from the pit to the prison to the palace. And in the palace, he, he became in charge. He was in charge of a lot of different things. But the reason that he was in charge and he, he, how he landed in the palace is because he told the Pharaoh of Egypt, or the king at that time, uh, what was going to happen, what was coming. He interpreted a dream. And so with that, uh, there was a famine, and you know, all of the land, and, 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 and they stored up you know, grains and, and provisions to, uh, to last for so many years, and the children, of, the children of Israel eventually ended up in Egypt. Abraham was gone, Isaac was gone, Jacob, who was Joseph's father, was still alive. All his children, all the children of Israel ended up in Egypt. Well, that was a good thing. But what happened is, is that the Bible says that uh, during their time that they were there, the Pharaoh dies, who knew Joseph. Now there's a new king or pharaoh that doesn't know Joseph. And he's looking at all of these foreigners and he feels threatened. Threatened because there's a lot of them and they could form an alliance with some of our enemies. They could do us some harm. So we need to suppress their flourishing. We need to change the, 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 the demographics here. We need to do what we have to do to save ourselves. This was his understanding, to remove the threat. His idea was to subject them to harsh terms. Slavery, bondage, working, slinging mud, you know, building, you know, doing things like that. Everything that was going to be a hindrance to them, that was going to put them under, uh, uh, under uh, to, to squash any enthusiasm, to squash their proliferation, that was what he wanted. And so, so much so that he even uh, set out an edict which said, he told the midwives of, 
of these the children of Israel, a couple of them, the Bible is mentioned, uh, that when they're, uh, if, if you are the midwife and, and, and they give birth to a son, I want you to kill it. Kill it. Why? Because without sons, you can't, you can't produce children. It would be difficult. All right, long story short, uh, what eventually happens is, is that there was a child that is born. And his name, well, he didn't have a name at first. The Bible says they didn't give him a name. But he was born during this time of this Eden. So he was hidden, shall we say. And when the Bible says that when the time came that he could no longer be hidden, they decided to set him loose. They, they decided to put him in a, in a, it was the same uh, uh, Hebrew word that was used, actually the same word used for the ark. Only two times in the Bible that this word was used. And I apologize for not having my slides up, but let's go. Um, the same word is set him in this little ark. Same word. And set him into the afloat into the Nile River, where one of Pharaoh's daughters sees this thing and, and takes him in, and I can just imagine, oh, a little baby. Oh, well, she don't want nothing about caring for this little baby. Watch this. So, and, and this is God's providence. This is this is amazing stuff. It's bad enough to have to put your child in a in a, in a little ark and set him afloat down a, down the river. And, and, and think about it. What are usually in rivers? Oh, crocodiles. You got, you got just nothing but bad stuff that could have happened to this little, little baby. Oh, but God had something better for that, better for him. And so uh, uh, this little fellow had a sister by the name of Miriam. And Miriam just happened to encounter, come across this, this encounter, this finding of this, this little baby by Pharaoh's daughter. And she says, well, I have someone who can take care of him. I'll go get him. And it turns out that she went and got his mother. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a wonderful story? I'm going to set my baby free. Oh, I'm crying. Oh. And then it comes to me that I'm going to get to take care of my baby. Isn't that a beautiful? And not only that, I'm going to get paid for taking care of my baby. She gave him some wages. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Now, I don't advise that we do stuff like that. No, we don't want to go around saying, put your baby in a river, because, you know, it'll come back to you. You're going to get paid for it. No, no, this is God's, God's hand at work, okay? <laughs> put your baby, set him free, and you're going to get paid to take care of the baby. Well, baby grew, took him, you know, eventually he was given the name of Moses. Given the name of Moses, which means pulled from the river, pulled from the water, okay? And so, um, Moses grows. The Bible says that in, in Luke chapter 7, I believe it is, that, that, that it was about the age of 40. About the age of 40 that Moses went out, the Bible says, uh, in, in the book of Exodus. The Bible says he went out to, uh, to his brothers. This word, went out, that is used to, to depict him going out, is the same word that is used to, de to, to describe exodus. It's exodus. It's the same word. So in other words, there was this departure that Moses had, and, and, and departing from what? Oh, we, we, we're not getting there. We haven't got there yet. But he, is, he, he went out to his brethren. And when he went out to his brother, he went out from somewhere. Uh, and that place that he went out from, he had this awakening in that uh, I am a Hebrew, just like these folks over here. In other words, he was in Egypt physically, but he had to spiritually disconnect himself from being in Egypt and spiritually connect himself with being with his brothers. So he went out to his brothers. And, and he observed the cruelness, you know, uh, of the, an Egyptian soldier and he killed this Egyptian. I'm just, you know, giving you what, you know, the, the, what's in the Bible. He killed this Egyptian, buried him in the sand. And you would say, amen. 
He did a good thing. Hallelujah. He deserved it. But God had something else to say about it. Oh, God had something else to say about it because he was usurping authority. In other words, his time had not come. Uh, he didn't know what was on the horizon. But had he known what was on the horizon and who's uh, who, who was on his who was who was the one that was guiding his footsteps, he would have he would have resisted that urge to kill that Egyptian. But he didn't. And the Bible says that later on, when he noticed that again he's with his Hebrew brothers, that he noticed two of them having a little problem, he he he, he jammed them up and says, you know, why are you fighting against each other? And you would have thought they would have said, you know, you're right. We shouldn't be doing that because we are brothers and we love each other. We come from the same, uh, 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 the same people, okay? We have the same people from the same side of the tracks we live on. But no, the Bible says they rejected him. They said to him, uh, are you going to kill us? So one of them said, are you going to kill us like you did that Egyptian? See, he thought he hid his secret. No, it wasn't here. It wasn't here. And so this rejection that he experienced, uh, coupled with the fact that he knew that they, what he did was, was no longer a secret, caused him to flee. And he fled the land of Egypt and this Pharaoh that was there and went to Midian, where he lived, watch this, 40 years. 40 years as a shepherd. Now there's something about shepherd that God shepherding that God has a as a, an affinity. He, 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 he used David was a shepherd. Oh yes, uh, uh, Moses. He had to learn a little bit about himself and 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 becoming a shepherd. You know, remember he was uh, uh, in the Pharaoh's house in the palace, and he went from that to being a shepherd, looking after sheep. Isn't that a turn of events? Not one that I would want, unless that's what I wanted. Well, that's not necessarily the case here. But in being a shepherd, he learned how to take care of things. Oh, before it was the point, and you go here, and you go here, and you, you know, you do as I say. But now you got to learn how to be a husband. You got to learn how to how to how to care about you know uh, uh, animals. You, 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 you know, it takes a certain uh, mentality to care about animals. Uh, I, I love dogs, but I don't want to take care of one. But I'm just going to tell you, for you dog lovers, I'm sorry. I love dogs. I play with them all day. If you ever want to, you know, I'll spoil them to death, but you better come back and get him. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Don't expect me to take care of him. Uh, and so uh, Moses had this coming out of Egypt experience. Oh yeah, he went out of Egypt. But the time came, and the Bible says that while he was shepherding, he saw a bush burning. He saw a bush, a flame in a bush. Not a burning, the bush was not burning. But he saw a flame in the bush. And so he said, well, let me check it out. And he has this encounter with God. He has this encounter with God and um, God has a few things to say to him. God has a, more than a few things to say to him. And it's this encounter, from this encounter, which I want us to focus on. And what I want us to use as a platform for our focus is let the Lord use you. Let God use you. I remember uh, back in the, my home, what I call at home, there was always a sister that would sit up in, in the front. And as a preacher was preaching, he might make a comment and she would yell out, let the Lord use you. Let the Lord use you. You know, go ahead and preach, bro. Let the Lord use you. In fact, you, hear, you watch some, some Zoom uh, broadcasts, you, you might hear that phrase. Let the Lord use you. Well, use me to do what? His bidding. We're going to look at this fellow Moses in that um, 
God wanted to use him. God chose Moses to lead his people out of Egyptian bondage. And he made it very clear to him. He gave him a motive. Yeah. He gave him, uh, he, he gave him uh, the solution. Yeah. And, 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 and he made it very clear to Moses what he wanted him to do. But we're going to see, and I just read Exodus 3, chapters 9 through 12, but this encounter that God had with Moses extends into chapter 4. And it's such that when you read this encounter, you say, you can't help but, you know, scratch your head and say, Moses, do you know who you're talking to? We can sit here and say that. Because we know that God is a God that can do anything. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipresent. Is that right? We know that. But sometimes we know that. But there are other people outside that don't know that. Who don't have, an under, have a relationship with God. Who haven't had the experience of, 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 of being able to call him Father. Who don't know what it's like to, to, to feel his love. Uh, although we experience his love, but to recognize this love coming as that which is coming from God. There are those who are aliens, or, or God is an alien to them. This fellow Moses, when you read this encounter that he had with God, you might say, well, Moses, don't you know who God is? Well, not necessarily. Because God told Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh, the king, and tell him to let my people go. Let my people go. Uh, so that they can worship me. I want you to go stand face to face with the Pharaoh. Even though he's got power here on this earth. I'm representing Moses. I want you to represent me. I've got power, not just here on earth, but in all of the heavens as well. In other words, uh, you, Moses, are to be my ambassador. And you, Moses, are to, to make it very clear to the Pharaoh what my desires are. Now, in verse number, in chapter 3, in verse number, um, verse number, verse number 10, the Bible says, uh, verse number 9, the Bible says, uh, let's go back to this. And this just isn't working too well here. There we go. He says, now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me, God. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. The cry of the sons of Israel is much like, just like our cries. It's no different. God hears our pleas. God knows our circumstances. Uh, uh, God, God understands what we're going through. And God has made a covenant. He made a covenant with them, and he's made a covenant with us as well. We are in a covenant relationship. And you understand that. And that covenant we recognize it as a New Testament. In other words, uh, we are uh, in a covenant with God because of our relationship with Christ. And they were in a covenant with God because of his relationship and his promises that he made to Ab Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so uh, God hears our, our, our groanings. God understands what we're going through. Uh, you may not think he hears it. Uh, now, you know, the question that we, this, we, we that I, I, I presented to our Bible class this morning was how long had they been uh, living or having to endure slavery? Because it says that we know that the scripture says they were there for 400 years. So did this slavery last 400 years? No, they weren't in slavery for 400 years. They weren't slaves when they went there. 
Uh, in fact, uh, there had to be a time where they flourished, you know, where their numbers grew, their wealth grew, and all of that. And to the point to where it became uh, a noticeable threat to the then king. So they were in slavery, they were in bondage, um, and and God in, in, in chapter, I mean in verse number nine, he says, uh, the cry has come up to me and I'm gonna do something about it. In verse number 10, he says, therefore come now and I will send you to Pharaoh, right? He's gonna send him. And he, he's gonna say uh, uh, that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. Um, and Moses' response, and I'm just gonna focus on this for the last few minutes. Moses' response was, certainly, uh, God said, and certainly, in, in verse number 12, he says, and certainly I will be with you. Certainly um, I will be with you. But Moses said, in verse number 11, he says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? You see, Moses, uh, he, was, he was experiencing something that we sometimes experience. Uh, and that is not really being sure of who we are. Um, not really being sure of what God's potential and what God is capable of doing. Uh, Moses uh, lacked uh, uh, confidence in himself. Uh, he, he, in, 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 in many cases, we'll, we'll read uh, in chapter 3, verse 11 through 12, he uh, lacked credentials. He needed some credentials. Uh, in other words, uh, I, I need for you to tell me who should I say sent me? Uh, in fact, who am I? Who am I? I'm just a nobody. And, 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 and God is going to say, well, that may be true, but I am with you. And because uh, I am with you, uh, everything's going to be all right. Well, he's just getting started. Again, I just read through chapter, uh, verse number 12. And he says, and you will know that it is I who sent you when at the end, you're going to come back here and worship me on this mountain. You can come back and worship me on this mountain. Okay? And so, that was one rebuttal. That was one point of contention. In verses number 13 through 22, Moses lacked content. Oh, he, he needed to know, you know, uh, 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 in fact, it says, uh, it says, uh, then Moses said to God, behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, what is his name? Give me some, give me some content. You, you have to give me something. Uh, what's his name? And we know that God says to, he says, says to them, I am who I am. He said, this you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. In other words, uh, you're not going alone. I'm going with you. And this is what you're going to say to him. Now you see what's happening here. Moses has got all these these uh, reasons, or I'm going to say excuses. Uh, uh, he says, "Who am I? Uh, they're not going to listen to me." And and, and 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 he's not done yet. Oh, oh he, he's not done. He's going to go on to say uh, that uh, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a good communicator. I'm, I'm not all that. Eloquent. I, I, I'm just a shepherd boy, you know, who uh, doesn't really know the right words to say, especially to the Pharaoh, especially to those, um, to, to the children of Israel, uh, whom he hadn't seen in a long time, in 40 years, 40 years. So he's, he's a stranger to them. Um, and so... You know, and, and, and then he says, well, they're not going to believe me. Oh, uh, uh, another uh, point of contention. You know, isn't that kind of like all of these points that I'm bringing up, isn't that some of the things that we experience? Uh, uh, who am I? I I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a evangelist. I'm not a disciple. I'm not a, a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I can't teach 
know, because I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, and and you know, uh, who and 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 and, and, and I'm going to go and say all these things, and and nobody's going to believe me anyway. Nobody's going to believe me. These are some of the rebuttals that 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 Moses had. Um, uh, and then he lacked commitment. He lacked a commitment. In verse in chapter 4, in verse number 13 through 17, the Bible says, But he said, Please, Lord, now send the message by whomever you will. Then the anger of the Lord burned against Moses, and he said, Is there not your brother Aaron the Levite? I know that he speaks fluently. And moreover, behold, he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Uh, you are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I, even I, will be with your mouth and his mouth, and I will teach you what you are to do. You see, he lacked commitment. He lacked confidence in his ability to communicate, which I get it. He lacked uh, 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 the confidence that, that knowing that even though I'm doing what you're going to tell me to do, that they're not going to listen to me. And then he lacked, uh, he, he, just, he, he just needed more purpose. He needed to elevate his awareness, his, his consciousness to what his mission was going to be. He needed a comprehensive understanding of what it was. In other words, he needed to have all the, the, the I's dotted and the T's crossed. In other words, before I can even be a Christian, there's some things in my life I need to straighten out. There's some things that 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 that, that I, I need some understanding. There's some there's some there's some points that need to be clarified for me in my life. Things that I need to weed out of my life. And watch this: you will never weed out everything in your life if you're waiting on those things to be weeded out, these changes to occur for this clarity to come into your life. You will never be a Christian because we're going to continue to sin. We're going to continue to uh, be separate from God. We're going to continue down the path that, that pulls us away from God instead of brings us closer to God. But what we need to know is that I may not have all the answers. I may not have all the strength. I may not have all the knowledge or the wisdom, but I do have God. And that I understand. And that, uh, because I know God and He knows me, He's going to tell me what I need to do. He's going to lead me and point me in, into the right direction and steer me away from, from those things that, that, that I need to be steered away from. You see, Moses was depending on his understanding. His understanding was limited to what he knew. But God had to elevate his understanding and make clear to him that yes, I'm sending you and calling you to do this thing. And, and in spite of what you perceive as your flaws and your shortcomings, I am with you. Physically, spiritually, mentally, as my brother Alfred likes us to, to say, he likes to live those words, spiritually, physically, and mentally. But that's true. God is with us. Uh, and, and yes, we may not, you know, we may not perceive things to be as we want them to be. You go out and you share the gospel. You share, you know, you tell people about Jesus. You tell people about uh, the glory of God. And, and they may reject you. But you know what? There's one thing about forgetting that it's hard to do. The only way that a person forgets is if there's brain trauma or you just get old. You don't forget. You know that saying, forgive and forget. You, you, you don't forget. You, you just don't. You know, I don't know how that's possible to intentionally forget something. It's there. And so uh, uh, we have to understand that when God calls us to do something, he wants us to understand this. When we read passages as this passage uh, in, in this example in the book of Exodus, uh, let it be for our learning. 
and that Israel had a problem. We have a problem. Israel petitioned God, the Bible says, that they, the cry went up to God, and God heard their, their cry. We cry out to God. Uh, God gives us, sends a, a deliverer. God sent them a deliverer, Moses. God sent us a deliverer, Jesus. Um, God wants us to, to come to him. He wants us to believe and accept this deliverer. That's what Moses had, was faced with. This was one of his, his, his points of contention. God wants us to, to accept and believe in Christ. It doesn't always happen. And, and, you know, even after they were delivered, you know, a lot of people just go along with something. You ever just go along with the crowd? Because that's what everybody's doing, even though you don't believe it. Well, I can guarantee you that when the time came that, that said, okay, we're all leaving Egypt, we're free. Whether you believed in, in Moses or not, or God, I'm sure you were going. The choice would be to stay in bondage or be free. Now, that's an easy choice for me to make. And that's somewhat, we experience the same dynamic. And that sometimes we just go along with things, with, with, uh, with uh, saying that we believe in, in, in God. You know, but our actions should follow our belief. This, uh, this out of Egypt redemption should not just end with, uh, in, in words, it should, it should begin in deeds. It's not the, it's not the ending of something. Is there ever an ending of something? Uh, it's just a new beginning of something. And let that be uh, our motivation as well. We know that, 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 that God wants us to hear his call. We know that God uh, offered up uh, a plan of redemption for our struggles and our, our situation, our problem that we could not solve. And so his, 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 all he says is simply believe and come to me, repent, uh, confess, uh, and be baptized and walk in the newness of life. Those are all requirements. And how do I know that? Let's look at chapter 3 and verse number 12 here. The Bible says, and he said, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you're going to do what? You're going to worship at this mountain. It's not just I'm going to bring you out. It's not just I'm going to set you free, but you're going to come back and you're going to worship at this mountain. So he had something, everything to do with their situation. He provided a solution and he provided uh, an end result. And that end result is that you're going to be redeemed back to me and you're going to worship me. He wants the same for us as well. He wants us to be redeemed back to him. But that redemption, there should be actions that follow that, that, that re redemption. And that is that we should worship him. Part of our worship and recognizing uh, God's sovereignty should be this. And I'm done. The same care that he provided for the children of Israel. The same level of concern that, that he provided for us as, as sinners, as those who were separated from him, is the same care, the same level of care that we are to provide and, 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 and direct towards those who are separated from God. It's not enough for us just to be, to sit here and say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That's not what he wants. I mean, he wants that, but that's not all he wants. He wants us to understand that we have a mission. And our mission is, is to show others the love, the same love and concern who don't know him that he showed us. He brought us out. Oh, did he not bring us out? Oh, he brought us out. And he wants us to to show others the same love. This, this Bottles to Bibles is just one example. It's just one example. We could use this money that we 
you know, if we got really excited about it, you know, you can go around and knock on your neighbor's door. Hey, I got some, you know, we're collecting bottles. Oh, oh. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you know, but you, you understand what I mean? We have an opportunity to rally around, to make a difference. This is what God's design and his desire is for us. Amen. And so our level of worship should reflect our commitment. Our level of commitment should be a reflection of our love. Our level of love should be a reflection that we know uh, that who God is, that, that we understand that He said that if they if they ask who who sent you, who are you going to tell them? Say, I am sent. I am who I am. Sent. God is, is, is a loving God and, and he certainly wants uh, us to be, uh, to demonstrate uh, the same love that he demonstrated towards us. So, let the Lord use you. Yeah, you'll have some reasons and some excuses. And some of them are true. And one of them, watch this, one I didn't mention, well, here's one, I just don't have time. That's very popular. I don't have time to come to church. I don't have time to do, I don't have time. But, you know, what is time a reflection of? And what is doing anything a reflection of? Your commitment. You're just not committed. We're just not, we commit to a whole lot of things, you know. Uh, um, I know people who would, who would, who would, don't have a whole lot of money. But they'll they'll take you know let some event come up and you know LeBron James is getting ready to break Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's NBA scoring record. Fact, unless something traumatic happens. The prices for the games at the at the Staples Center that one game where he's expect they say those prices are going way way up. Can't give a penny to it. You will not even acknowledge God. You see, commitment or time is a reflection of our commitment. And so, you know, yes, it's time. You know, I have a daughter, she wants to worship, but she works on Sunday. I don't like that. But you know, I told her just pray about it. You know, God will, you know, just petition God, just you know, be patient. God will work things out. I believe that. God will work things out, you know. Um, anyway, um, let us be doers. But to do that, we need to, if, if, we, if we read the book of Exodus and study the book of Exodus, it provides a good model for us. God has provided a wonderful model of, of a problem, what he's going to do about it, how he's going to do it, what everybody's role is, but in the end, he expects us to worship him. Amen. Amen. If you need prayers for strength, if you need prayers for understanding, if you haven't been here for a while, and you would just like to say, you know, ask for, for you know, I, I, I remember a time when if you miss worship assembly, when I came to Church of Christ, it was very fruitful. If you miss worship with me, you better come up here and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I've seen, I've, I've forsaken the assembly. That was how it went. Wow, that was a long time ago. But those things actually happen. If it's in your heart that you want to be more committed to uh, your walk with God and get closer to God, by all means, we ask you to, to request prayer, request something. You know, sometimes we need help. Do we not? We can't do things on our own. We need someone to come alongside of us. You know, that that uh, when I was an educator, I started out as a, a parent educator. Yeah, and that, that just meant that I was a helper. This thing that came, that word para is a prefix for a helper. Parachute, paraplegic, para whatever. It's, you, you know, we, we, we just need someone to come alongside of us and help us. And, and, and it has to start with
commitment. It has to start with uh, loving God and wanting to, to get closer to God. So we're going to stand and sing our song of invitation. And let us just, you know, rally around, you know, God. Rally around God. First thing we've got to do is make it known to God what it is that we want. Let him know, you know, these groanings. Let him know what our situation is. Is situations are if you have multiple, and watch and see what he does. Draw closer to God, and he'll draw closer to you. Uh, I think it's the word. Well, um, but you gotta, you know, there, there's a there's a there's a, a story of a guy who who had long hair. A guy who was in the barber shop, and he was trying to tell this the barber about God. And the barber was like, well, there's, there's no God, you know. Uh, so the guy goes outside the barber shop, and he steps out the door, and there he looks to the right, and there's a man with long, long hair. And he goes back into the barber shop, and he says, well, there's no barber. And the guy says, well, what do you mean, there's no barber? Well, uh, just like you said, there's no God, uh, you know, Here's a man with long hair, and he says, well, he didn't come to me to get a haircut. Well, you don't go to God either, so therefore you think there's no God. So there's no barber. You see the thinking? <laughs> come to God. you got to come to him. you gotta, you got to, you have to pursue God, and, and you won't have to pursue him, like, you won't have to beg and please God to take me back. Please, I'm just such a, no, 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 no. That's not the requirement. Come to God. Make a petition known to Him that you want to get to know Him better. And start with that, that you just want to get to know Him better. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, I need to be baptized. Just start with God. I just want to get to know you better. And watch and see what happens. Let's sing. I hear the Savior say, Thy spirit is called Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me thine all in all Jesus made it all All to Him I go Sin has left the crimson stain
out to this community to let them know of your son and our savior and that they'll have the opportunity to, to worship with us here as we leave this place we pray that you'll take care of us and watch over us and keep us safe until our next meeting here together thank you for all these things in jesus name 